Welcome to an example on how to solve an exact first order differential equation. An exact differential equation must fit one of these two forms here and the partial of n with respect to y must equal the partial of n with respect to x. So notice how the given differential equation fits this form here. So we know that m of x comma y is equal to two e to the two x sine y minus four y squared sine two x and we know n of x comma y is equal to e to the two x cosine y plus four y cosine two x, which I've already listed here below. Next we need to verify the partial of n with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. So to find the partial of m with respect to y, we differentiate m with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of two times e to the two x sine y with respect to y is equal to two e to the two x cosine y. And the derivative of negative four y squared sine two x with respect to y would be equal to negative eight y sine two x. And now we need to find the partial of n with respect to x. So we differentiate n with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So we have the derivative of e to the two x cosine y with respect to x. We'll have to apply the chain rule which will be e to the two x times two times cosine y, or two e to the two x cosine y. And then we have plus the derivative of four y cosine two x with respect to x, which would be four y times negative sine two x times two, which would be negative eight y or minus eight y sine two x. So this does verify we have an exact differential equation the equation fits the correct form and the partial of n with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. Which means the solution is going to be in the form f of x comma y equals c such that the partial of f with respect to x equals m and the partial of f with respect to y equals n. So now let's work on finding our solution. Because we know the partial of f with respect to x is equal to m, we can recover f of x comma y by integrating m with respect to x. But we do have to remember we're not going to recover the y terms of f of x comma y, so when we integrate we'll have to include plus a function of y. So f of x comma y equals the integral of m of x comma y integrated with respect to x. Notice how when we integrate with respect to x, we'll have to perform u substitution, where for both terms, we would have u equals two x. So if u equals two x, notice that differential u is equal to two dx, which means one half du equals dx. So when integrating, we'll have an extra factor of one half. So f of x comma y equals, well the integral of e to the two x sine y with respect to x, would be equal to two times one half e to the two x times sine y, which would just be e to the two x times sine y. And the integral of negative four y squared sine two x with respect to x would be equal to negative four y squared times one half times negative cosine two x, which gives us plus two y squared cosine two x. And again, we're not recovering the y terms of f of x comma y by integrating with respect to x. So we have plus a function of y, let's call it h of y. And we can also think of including the constant of integration in the function h of y. We also know the partial of f with respect to y must equal n of x comma y. So what we'll do is compare n of x comma y to the partial of f with respect to y using the function that we just found because they must be equal. So n of x comma y must equal Again, the partial of f with respect to y, so we'll differentiate f with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So the derivative of e to the two x sine y with respect to y would be equal to e to the two x cosine y. And then plus the derivative of two y squared cosine two x with respect to y, which would be plus four y cosine two x. And the derivative of h of y with respect to y would be h prime of y. So we have plus h prime of y. Now we want to compare the terms of n of x comma y and the partial derivative that we just found. 
Notice how we have e to the two x cosine y. We also have four y cosine two x. And notice how there are no other terms in n of x comma y, but we do have h prime of y here on the right, which means h prime of y must equal zero. In most cases, this won't be equal to zero, and we would integrate both sides of this equation in order to find h, which would give us the missing terms in our function f of x comma y. Notice in this case, if we try to do that, we'd have the integral of h prime of y dy equals the integral of zero dy, where on the left we just have h of y. On the right, we'd actually have any constant c. In this case, I've noticed how there's no reason to substitute c for h of y here, because remember the solution to our equation is in the form of f of x comma y equals c, where the constant is on the right. So there's no reason to also include a constant on the left. And therefore, we can conclude that f of x comma y is equal to e to the two x sine y plus two y squared cosine two x, which means our solution to the differential equation would be e to the two x sine y plus two y squared cosine two x equals c. So going back to our first slide, Notice how we're only entering the left side of the equation because we already have equal c here. So we only enter e to the two x sine y plus two y squared cosine two x. I hope you found this helpful.